Hey everyone, JL here, and welcome back to Bridge the Divide, where I examine irrational beliefs, the irrational behaviors that follow, and how we, with education, rationality, and reason, can bridge the societal divides that they create. I wanted to take a moment to express my gratitude for the outpouring of support in the wake of Jingles' passing, and the patience for the decided lack of content the past couple of weeks. Our dogs are like our kids to us, and your messages of support really helped Angela and I to get through probably one of the toughest times in our lives. I would also like to introduce the newest member of our family, Torque. We rescued him from the SPCA. He is a black-mouthed cur and just under a year old. He has been a huge injection of puppy energy in the house, and we look forward to all of the big adventures that we're going to go on together. Once again, thank you all very, very much. So, as I took the time off to deal with these personal matters, the work has really started to pile up. Unlike me, Stupid never takes a day off. I've spent the past few days hunting through everything that I could find, looking for some substantial videos that I could take a look at, something with some real meat to them. And I've found that some of the best videos to respond to have more going on behind the scenes than you would initially see. And this one today is no exception, because what started out as a brief look at Christian ignorance and dishonesty devolved into something much, much worse. So, without further gilding the lily and no more ado, let's dive in. This will be my first look at hate pastor Bruce Mejia of First Works Baptist Church in El Monte, California. Suffice to say, Mejia has a bit of a reputation because it has taken him less than five years to become known as one of the vilest Baptist pastors in the hate preach game. Mejia is notorious for his anti-LGBTQ messages, which take a number of forms, from destroying LGBTQ flags. I'm so sick and tired of them parading this thing around us. You know, it's a time to just rent. It's a time to rend. Yeah. To peppering his sermons with hateful slurs. What if we don't rip on the fags? It's time to call a faggot a faggot, yeah. a transvestite a disgusting dog. Yeah. To even telling his critics, LGBTQ community members, and their advocates to permanently unsubscribe from the Life Channel. This overblown ex-security guard and his church have been the target of citywide petitions for removal, massive protest caravans, and sadly, one bombing that, while no one was injured, left the building red-tagged. While I normally would chalk all of this up to anger and ignorance, and maybe even a little internalized homophobia on Mejia's part, I was really curious as to just how ignorant he really is. And lucky for me, he answered that question in a recent sermon when he talked about what he thinks atheism actually is. Take it away, Bruce. So God is not necessarily interested in winning over the worker of iniquity, believe it or not. The person who is just a blatant atheist, who makes it his agenda to just try to tear down the things of God, God is actually not interested in trying to win that person over or make himself palatable to that person. So this is Mejia slyly skirting around that whole lack of good evidence problem that Christians face. In Mejia's mind, there's no evidence because God is not interested in giving evidence to atheists. Only those who choose to first believe in a God are then granted their confirmation bias. I mean evidence. Now we obviously understand there's people out there who claim to be atheists, but they're not really atheists. It's kind of like a title that they use to be cool or... You know, it's just more of like a trendy thing to say. No, atheists are the opposite of theists. We don't believe in a god or gods. And it's not because it's the cool thing to do. It's because the claim of a god cannot be sufficiently backed up. You know, I'll often knock at a door and say, you know, do you go to church? And they'll say, no, I'm an atheist. And then they'll start referring to God. You ask if they went to church. Since the majority of U.S. citizens identify as Christian for the time being, it follows that they would assume you're talking about God. You know, and they're just like, I just don't like church. I'm like, okay, you're more like an agnostic then, right? No, not liking church doesn't make you an atheist. Doesn't even make you an agnostic for that matter. As a matter of fact, there are many Christians who are devout believers who can't stand church. And who knows why that might be. 
but it may have something to do with all the aggressive politicizing, blatant hypocrisy, mixed messages, and oftentimes being a haven for child predators. And they're just like, well, what is that? You know, so they don't really even know the terms. Yes, we do. Agnostic is when you don't know something. Atheist is when you don't believe in a god or gods. It's actually pretty simple. Okay. We're talking about atheists. We're talking about the hardcore atheists that just hate the Lord. Just as there are Christians who are Christian for bad reasons, there are atheists who are atheists for bad reasons. But that doesn't mean the vast majority are atheists just because they hate or are mad at God. There are likely millions of people on this earth that absolutely believe in a God and absolutely hate it as well. Many atheists become hardcore because they've seen firsthand the lasting and damaging effect that religion can have on society, and they've chosen to take a hardline stance against it. Now, here's the, here's the funny thing about atheists, okay? Atheists just kind of just don't believe in anything. No, that would be a true nihilist. Atheists just don't believe in a god or gods. There are, of course, many other things to believe in other than a god. Like the love of a puppy. Well, that, at least they claim to, right? Now Mejia is dishonestly proposing to his gullible audience that atheists only claim to not believe in God. This is, of course, a misrepresentation of atheism. But it's also where this conversation gets really sticky. In a court of law in this society, we typically state that a person is innocent until proven guilty. We are charitable to avoid biasing any interpretations of the evidence. What Mejia has actually done here is demonstrated one of the major fail-safes built into the Christian faith. Christianity implicitly states that unbelievers are denying God in their unrighteousness. Or, put more plainly, we're all just a bunch of liars because we love sinning so much. Well, I don't like to feel good. I like to feel evil. Oh. The intention here is to shift the burden of proof from proving that a God exists to forcing the atheist to prove their disbelief. And while a person can demonstrate many things about themselves to be true, how can a person possibly and honestly demonstrate what they don't believe? Because even repeated behavior that would seem to affirm that disbelief could just be criticized as being dishonest, even if there's no evidence to support. It's a psychological manipulation that is also a common tactic that is often seen in abusive relationships. Mejia does this because he has been indoctrinated to believe everything the Bible says concerning unbelievers. Christians who do this are also committing four different fallacies. The first is begging the question. Mejia's reasoning that God exists and the Bible is true is entirely circular. The second is called Morton's Fork, or Heads I Win, Tails You Lose. Believers are taught that if they convert someone to Christianity, they've won. They're doing the Lord's work. But if they fail to convert someone, it's not because their arguments or their evidence were bad. It's because the unbeliever doesn't want to be converted, or they're given over to a reprobate mind. Third, it poisons the well. If Christians are conditioned that unbelievers will be dishonest from the start, then anything the unbeliever says, outside of what the Christian wants to hear, will be considered dishonest. And last is the unfalsifiability fallacy in claiming what unbelievers actually believe. Furthermore, all of these fallacies have another utility for Christians. They protect the faith and the follower from external inquiry meaning Christians won't potentially be exposed to lines of inquiry that may lead them to leave the church. Because if everyone leaves the church, then who's going to tithe? It really is a pretty sick con they've got going on, and they have had a millennia to perfect it. They don't believe in deity, but yet there's only one God that they seem to attack. Right. More than any other God. Yep. Right. Hmm. This would be geographic bias. Mejia lives in the U.S., and the majority of U.S. citizens identify as Christian. At least for now. So the majority of arguments he hears, being in the U.S., will likely be against the Christian God. It certainly doesn't mean we don't argue against anyone else. In fact, the majority of my arguments on Discord stages are against Muslims. That's interesting. They always seem to attack the God of the Bible. Once again, it really all depends on where you live. Why don't they ever go for Allah? I have, several times. Isn't that interesting? You know, because, uh, you know, the, the Quran has some pretty crazy stuff, too. Well, he's not wrong. 
And so why don't they go after a law? We do. Quite a lot, in fact. Just because you haven't heard them doesn't mean they're not happening. Mm, that's weird. You never hear, like, atheists really going after these other religions and other deities. We do. You know, why don't the atheists go after, like, the Greek gods and stuff? We do. Why don't they go after the Roman gods? Why don't they go over uh, after these pagan gods? Oh, we do. The reason you don't really hear about it, Mejia, is because, one, geographic bias, and two, evangelicals aren't really trying to influence legislation in the name of Zeus, Ra, Odin, or Gaia. I'll tell you why, because the God of the Bible is the real God. That's a positive claim. Feel free to demonstrate the truth of it any time. Well, we're waiting. So when they say that they're an atheist, they're actually referring to the fact it's code for hating the God of the Bible. This is either stupidity or blatant dishonesty. Mejia either doesn't know what an atheist actually is, or he does, and he's just misleading his audience to poison the well against people that he doesn't like. Because they never attack other gods. They never go after, you know, uh, Islam or Hinduism. Yes, we do. All the time, in fact. You're just not privy to those conversations because you're also an atheist towards all those other gods. Or, you know, all of these other false gods of other religions. They never do that. See, he's an atheist too. Just for one less god than the rest of us. They always focus in on Jesus Christ. They always focus in on the Old Testament and all his laws where there's laws in other countries from people who believe in false gods who actually put into practice some of the same things that the Bible puts into practice. And Mejia summons his army of straw men to avoid addressing the real issue that he has no evidence to support his claim. But yet they don't seem to go after those people. I wonder why. I'll tell you why. Because God is actually the true God of the Bible and they know it. Huh. That's a positive claim and a lie all in the same sentence. Like I said, Mejia, feel free to present your evidence at any time. I'll wait. But while I'm waiting, try not to misrepresent atheism so much. One, it makes you look like a total ignorant douche. And two, I think the God you chose to believe in has some pretty specific things to say about it. And remember, the only way we're going to have a legitimate exchange of ideas is with charitability and equal representation. Without these, we'll just be talking past one another, and that does everybody a disservice. Thankfully, Mejia's confirmed for us that he really is as ignorant as his rhetoric implies he is. And with more critiques like this one, his followers will begin to see it too. So as I was researching Mejia and his little hate group, I discovered that ignorant attitudes such as his are not the isolated occurrences I initially thought they were. To my dismay, I found that Mejia is actually one of a group of pastors that are all linked behind the scenes. You see, Mejia and his church are a part of the New Independent Fundamentalist Baptist Movement, or New IFB. They are an independent association of deeply conservative, King James Bible-only following Baptist churches. In short, they're a cult. Their movement is a response to perceived liberalism in the current Baptist organization, and it was started by Pastor Stephen Anderson. You know, this asshole. Now, to me, LGBT stands for let God burn them. GPS is on their way out here. Oh, okay. So this is like Nazi Germany now, right? So I have to stop at these checkpoints and... I don't have any advice for homosexuals except to put a bullet in your own head so that you don't molest my kids or anyone else's kids. I already know what's going on. I don't need you to explain it to me. I know that you've stopped me when I'm traveling. Within the United States, I didn't cross any border, and you're infringing on my right to travel freely in the United States. In the end times, before the second coming of Christ, we're going to have to be ripping face about a bunch of perverts and homos. You know what? It's what a it sin is. not That's to be what it is. You... Anderson and his ilk don't really consider themselves a denomination per se, and there are some theological issues that they do disagree on. But overall, they're united by doctrines including salvation by faith alone, hard preaching, soul winning, and once saved, always saved. They're also staunchly against liberals, LGBTQ, Catholicism, 
Mormonism, and they absolutely love their New World Order conspiracies. They're also the group that held the Make America Straight Again conference in 2019, and in their most disgusting display, openly celebrated the Pulse nightclub mass shooting. And as of 2019, the new IFB has 32 associated congregations in five countries, mostly in the U.S. And the attitudes displayed by Mejia regarding atheists, agnostics, and pretty much anyone who isn't them run rampant through the new IFB cult. So not only is Mejia himself an ignorant, intolerant, and dishonest douchebag, but the cult that his congregation belongs to supports and upholds remaining ignorant, intolerant, and dishonest douchebags. And given the extreme nature of their rhetoric, the more people that are aware of these individuals spreading their hate, the better prepared we can all be in countering their messages of societal divide. Well, that's going to conclude this first look at Hate Pastor Bruce Mejia of First Works Baptist Church and the new IFB cult. Thank you for watching, and if you like the vid, please like and subscribe, and be sure to hit that bell for notifications. And please comment your thoughts on the subject below. I love hearing what you all have to say, and those interactions really help with the algorithm. Don't forget, March is Developmental Disability Awareness Month. My beard was supposed to be green to help with awareness, but I'm having some difficulty getting it there. Hopefully, it'll be better next time. Oh, and if you love scary movies and film history, check out me and my filmmaker friends over at the Week in Horror podcast, now in our third season. All of the links you need to support this channel or our podcast are down in the description below. Thank you all again so much for joining me. And as always, be safe, be excellent to each other, and together we can bridge the divide.